Hello, YouTube friends. This is Richard Maybe with Richard Maybe Presents. Very excited about this show. Um, I'm back uh, in my back porch, Lanai, and uh, going over comic books and just having a, a great time on a Saturday afternoon going through comic books, specifically my classic illustrated comic books. I love them. I just love, uh, I always loved, liked classic illustrated when I was a kid. Uh, because I would I would read the book and then read the comic book uh, You know to do a book report and that kind of thing, but um, I've, I've Just recently uh, Kind of developed a, a, a New vista a, a higher Level of appreciation for the classic illustrated comic books and uh, I, I really like reading them. You know, I, I'm, I'm a great superhero fan, and I like uh, Beetle Bailey and Sad Sack and the, and the, and the funny books. But uh, these classic illustrated, I mean, they're just, they're fantastic. The artwork, uh, the storyline, of course. Uh, you know, the chance in the course of reading a comic book you know, you get the sense of a great novel, you know. So anyway, um, I got a lot of these for Christmas. My sister Patty bought these for on, on uh, Mercari. And uh, and then I, some of them I had already had. And I thought I'll go over. I, I, may, I may be repeating one or two of them from previous shows. But, you know, <laughs> have some fun here, you know. So, uh, two years before the mast, R.H. Dana Jr. And as much as I appreciate the people that publish Classic Illustrated, they did make a mistake on this title. The, uh, the B should be capitalized. And the T should be lowercase. I don't know why, how that got through proofreading. It amazes me. This is issue number 25, priced at 15 cents. The price tells you a lot. If you, if the price is 25 cents here, that's the, that's a, a reprint edition. If it's 15 cents, um, there's a greater chance of it being, um, the original or at least the first reprint if you see the 25 cents it's usually the second reprint but um, great storyline here rh dana jr and here's the interesting thing about rh dana jr his first name was richard and he was a junior so guys okay in my the, the man's okay in my book uh, here, they got the biography of him. There's a drawing of him, the author. It's a great high seas adventure. I just recently uh, read this one. Great storyline. Um, try to give you, a, in a nutshell, some background on uh, Richard Henry Dana Jr. Richard Henry Dana Jr. was born in 1815 in Cambridge, Massachusetts, the son of a distinguished writer. So he had uh, he had writing in his blood, you know, it was in his DNA. Um, you know, they make this, it's a conspiracy. They, they're making this print smaller and smaller. <laughs> um, in 1834, while a student at Harvard, an attack of measles so weakened Dana that he was forced to discontinue his studies. Um, I can identify with that. Um, I remember <clears throat> when I was in college, I had a sore throat, 
then strep throat. And I was, because I had had rheumatic fever when I was 12, so I was really frightened. So I had uh, just rested for a week or so and was okay. But I identify with that situation of being sick and discontinuing your studies. Faced with a long convalescence, he decided to take a sea voyage, choosing to sail as a seaman. This two-year voyage changed the whole course of Dana's life. You know, you know, you talk about fate and destiny and, you know, the path we're on. We come to a fork in the road. We go either left or right. Everything changes. And here's a man. He's in uh, Harvard University, obviously a very intelligent man, uh, serious student. He gets uh, the measles and has to drop out of college. Then goes on a voyage. I'm going to take a break. I'll be right back. Okay, friends, I'm back. Um, talking about Richard Henry Dana Jr., author of Two Years Before the Mast. So we have uh, Richard goes on this seafaring journey as a seaman for two years. On his return to Boston, he reestablished he re-entered Harvard to complete his studies. In 1840, he opened up a law office, devoting most of his legal career to marine cases. Particularly, he espoused the course of the common seaman he knew so well. So he had a, you know, in his heart, he had a good feeling for um, the, the, you know, the, 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 the everyday seaman, the, uh, you know, the, the, the chap who hoists up the mast, you know, that kind of thing. Two years before the mast, ta-da! Two years before the mast was the first accurate account of life at sea from the point of view of the ordinary sailor. So we're not getting it from the point of view of the captain or the lieutenant or whatever ranks they are, you know. Uh, what are the... Is Captain, was it, uh, what was Gilligan? Uh, the, was it the captain, the skipper, whatever, you know. Though many people have written of the sea, most of them were men who sailed as gentlemen with their gloves on. As officers or passengers, in such capacity, they could have little contact with the sailors, the men before the mast. You know, these were the, the lads that uh, had calluses on their hands. Um, these were the lads that uh, they, they bunked on the bottom of the ship, you know. Um, they uh, had no privileges, uh, had the rough life, you know. Um, they, uh, when, there, when there was a storm and lightning and thunder, they were out there, uh, you know, on, 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 on the ship, above board, on the ship, fighting the storm, you know, hoisting the mast and all that kind of thing. The ready sympathy for his suffering fellow man and the simple honesty that showed so clearly in Dana's book characterized his life. He did much to bring to the attention of the public the injustices practiced at the sea. Uh, after you, you know, like say if you leave from New York City, after three miles, it's maritime law. You know, the captain is, uh, the captain is the king, you know, and, um, uh, Whatever the law of the land that you come from is not applicable, you know. You're kind of at the mercy of the captain of the ship, you know. Uh, let's see, where was I here? Um, he did much to bring 
to the attention of the public the injustices practiced at sea. And he worked continually to improve the lot of the sailor. In 1859, suffering from overwork, Dana made a voyage around the world. On his return, he was appointed by President Lincoln, U.S. Attorney for Massachusetts. He did all right for himself, you know, U.S. Attorney for Massachusetts. In 1878, he went to Europe to prepare a book on international law. Dana passed away in Rome in 1882. 1850, yeah. I guess for that time period, you know, he lived a relatively long life. Kind of heart, heart moving thing. You know, it's good to know the story behind the authors, you know. This is a great, this is a great comic book. Uh, <laughs> it's the funniest thing. I, I stack a classic. I never know what I'm going to do. I stack, stack a classic illustrated. I was going to go through them all. And here I am, you know, 10, 12 minutes into my into the show and I've just gone over Richard Dana's Richard Dana Jr.'s life. Hmm. Oh, that's a nice story here. Dug out to diesel. This is the same issue. This is two pages long. Many are the guy the guy on this side. Kind of a loud mouth, you know. I don't want to say too much. He might be, you know, he might, he might watch my video. I don't know. <laughs> He's called me a loud mouth. That's the, that's it. Now i no more watching his vlog. But he is. He's a loud mouth. He's just the king. Uh, buried treasure. This is good. It's a nice little story about. You know, they round up the nice graphics. There. Were, does anyone remember, if you're from the New York, New Jersey area, uh, Chuck McCann. Chuck McCann was on Channel 11 on Sunday morning. And there was no VCR or anything. So I think he was on from 8, 8 a.m. to 12 noon. He was on a long time during the, you know, in the morning. And Sunday school started at 9.30. So I used to walked to Sunday school with my buddies and then church was at 11. So I had uh, from 8 a.m. leave the house around quarter to nine so I could get like 45 minutes of church. But Chuck McCann used to read the comics on channel 11. And then Sonny Fox was on channel five, the same thing. And he would read the, the comics, the Sunday, the Sunday comics. I was thinking I should read, I should read uh, a classic illustrated one show. That'd be kind of a neat thing to do. He's quieted down over there. It's like, there's like, there's a, like, I got the corner lot. Then there's a street. And then his house. And like, <laughs> I can hear everything he says all the time. <laughs> Guys. <laughs> you know, you know, he never learned, uh, you know, outside, you know, indoor, Voice, outside voice, you know. Oh, I'll tell you. Um, I think I'll read the, at least read the introduction here. This is kind of nice. Two, year, two years before the mast, they put down R.H. But I'm going to say Richard, Richard Dana Jr., With due admiration for the knowledge of professional detail, I feel that enthusiasm will overcome the want of acquaintance. Such was the conviction of the strong young man who lived and wrote this account of his days in the American merchant service before the sailless, spiralless days of engine-driven hawks. No motors, clearly the mast. When the sea brewed a witchery seasoned with hardships, 
and the great ships that dipped into Neptune's briny cup quaff the gall of drudgery. It is not the pleasant memoirs of the pleasure-seeking passenger, nor the anniversary speech of Lord Paramount, the captain, but the unexaggerated testimony of a voice from the forecastle presenting such shocking evidence of the seaman's life that it revolutionized the entire administration of maritime law. I, I have a funny feeling, can I say this respectfully? I say this respectfully. What the book uh, Uncle Tom's Cabin awoke in the awareness and consciousness of the horrors of slavery to our nation, I think two years before the mast, kind of awoken the plight of the ordinary sailor aboard ships that were driven by the wind, you know, by the mast. This, uh, I highly suspect, no doubt, that this is a, an autobiographical book. Ah, oh, the drawings are great. I just, I, I have to share some of the drawings. It just, I mean, Classics Illustrated did a phenomenal job with artwork. I mean, I mean, just phenomenal job with artwork. I think there was one, a double pager here, or a full page picture. Here it is. Powerful. Good pencil drawing, good inking, good coloring, you know. And, and, and the blocking, the way they set the blocks is very powerful. I think, I, I think there was another, I think I had a, I think I, I think I remember there was another full pager here. Uh, I'll tell you, read this book. You know, even if you just get the classic illustrated and read it, it's a, it's a great story. Positive there was another full pager here. No, I guess not. I thought that was sure there was. Uh, I'm getting old. I'm 67. You know, get forgetful. Let's look at that artwork. Look at that artwork. Phenomenal artwork. I mean, I mean, look at that. Phenomenal artwork. Whew. The colors, the, uh, the drawing. And they were always true to the to the spirit of the of the of the of the novel that they that they transformed into comic book format. I just it was they almost did it like it was a movie, you know. See how many people walking around out there. Just great, great. Look at this one, look at this picture of the ship there. Great artwork, just great artwork, I'll tell you. I said, I said, let me get through about eight or nine classic illustrated. I got through, did one. Oh, I'll tell you, I, I don't know what it is. But I really like these classic illustrated. Look at that. You know, uh, captures the heart and soul of the novel. You know, just so well done. 
Look at the expression of the captain there, you know. Just kind of, you know, that, that, that mean guy thing, you know, like that treacherous dictator of a guy, you know. Great stories here. You can see like the, the feeling of the dichotomy. You've got the, you know, the people on the ship, the guests sailing, you know, and the hardworking sailors. Gives you a feel for it here. These great stories. I'll tell you, you can get, I, you know, you get some good deals on eBay and um, nothing against eBay. Try eBay. But uh, Mercari is good too. I think it's M E R C A R I, something like that. Mercari, anyway. You get some, pre get some pretty good deals on Mercari. What they tend to do on Mercari now is not so much an auction. And they, they sell comic books in sets. You know, they'll sell like eight or nine comic books. So you get a good deal on the postage and handling. And then they give you a pretty good deal bang for buck on each comic book. This, the view of this ship here, this drawing showing the view of the ship here. Just... Uh, Great stuff. Look at this sense of, uh, the sense of victory in the sailor, the sense of, you know, like nothing's going to stop him. You know, he standing for what's right, truth, justice in the American way. You know, superheroes without a cape, <laughs> superheroes without a costume. There was one here that was quite, Breathtaking, you know. Ha ha. I don't know what, I don't know what kind. I don't know what this is. So, what kind of uh, uh, I don't know what kind of fish this is, but gives you a feel for it, you know. On the high seas, you know. Great, great stories. Just great stories. Look at, look at this, so you can sense the storm, you know, the danger of the storm, the wind, you know, the, 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 the torrid rain, the darkness, you know, just having one single lantern to light the night. Great, great comic books here. Just great stuff, you know. Just the feeling of the storm, here, you know, the feeling of the storm. You're out there, you know, you're on that ship. You know, you got the ropes in your hands, you got the calluses, your, the palms of your hands are bleeding. You know, you got to raise the mast, you know, you the Hundreds of people's lives are, are literally in your hands if you let that rope slip, you know. It's the kind of thing it is, you know. And knowing you're not getting any, an attaboy or, hey, good job deal, you know. It's, you know, probably not the best food in the world, you know. It's great, 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 great stories. Ah, here's the, the, the ending. Two years before the mast. And, and, you know, so if you see it on eBay or Mercari and you see the 25 cent version, 25 cent version, get it. You know, hey, the fifth, the, the original is the same as the second printing, the third printing, the fourth printing. They change the covers sometimes. 
but it's, it's, you know, the first edition, you know, might be $50. The second edition might be $20. Then you go to the third edition where it's a, where they're selling it for a quarter, you know, drops down a lot. Do you, do you really, do you, do you really need the original, you know? So this was fun. This is this is this is this is what I was gonna get through today. This is how I was gonna get through these today. Oh, but it was. Uh, I'd rather do one. You know, I, I like doing a, a whole stack of comic books, but sometimes it's good just to do one comic book and go through it thoroughly and have some fun going through it and we all learn a little bit you know from it ah <sighs> i think i'm gonna close so uh oh my youtube friends um if you like this video please smash the like button it helps me a lot with the big wheels at youtube and also, if you have not yet subscribed, please do subscribe and hit the bell on the right-hand side. That will give you uh, updates and notices when I post new videos and vlogs. Thanks. So this is Richard Maybe signing off. Um, stay strong. Stay healthy. Stay confident. Signing off.